Welcome to the Miraculous Metal Shrine located in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, home of the Perpetual Monday Novena to Our Lady of the Miraculous Metal. Here at the Shrine, our faithful have been gathering to pray this Novena to Our Lady every Monday since 1930. Our Blessed Mother invited St. Catherine Labore to come to the foot of the altar to receive grace. Today, we invite you to join us in praying this powerful Novena. Mother Mary embraces everyone who comes to her and unites us all in a family of prayer. May Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal intercede for you and your special intentions with her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Please be seated. My name is Father Frank Sachs. One of my assignments is chaplain in our infirmary here at St. Vincent Seminary, and I'm one of the Vincentian priests involved in our basilica services. So a warm welcome to all of you to this basilica shrine of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Timothy Lyons, CM. The Mass intention for this Mass is for Frank and Jerry Tallarico. The homilist today is also Father Tim Lyons. He'll be speaking about Holy Mary, Fountain of Light and Life. The Pope's monthly intention for April is for the role of women. Let us pray that the dignity and worth of women be recognized in every culture and for an end to the discrimination that they face in various parts of the world. <coughs> Our announcements. We remind you now to please silence all your cell phones at this time. Thank you. We invite you to take home the Miraculous Medal Novena pamphlet for yourself or to share with others. Otherwise, just please return the pamphlet to the Novena holders located on each side or in, in the back of the Basilica. Thank you. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament on Mondays is available all day in the Crypt Chapel located in the lower level. LaSalle University's choir's spring concert entitled Soon I Shall Fly is taking place here at the Basilica on Saturday, April 20th at 2 p.m. All are invited. A free will offering will be collected. And our 4 p.m. Mass will follow if you wish to remain to attend. The anointing of the sick will be during the 12.05 p.m. Mass on Monday, April 22nd. Please be sure to share this information with others. Monday, April 29th is the first anniversary of our elevation to a minor basilica by Pope Francis. Join us at the 12.05 p.m. Mass as we celebrate this historical event. We're looking for people to help for the special events just mentioned. If you have time before or after any of these events, the sign-up sheet is on the table in the lower level. Thank you in advance for volunteering. The blessing of religious articles and investiture in the Miraculous Medal will take place after Mass. You only need to be invested once in your lifetime. Our Basilica favors. Thank you, Mother Mary. My son was injured in a car accident. It was touch and go for a while. However, with all the prayers, he will be just fine. I was diagnosed with cancer and am now in remission. Thank you, dear lady. Thank you, Blessed Mother. I was given a new title and raise at my current job. And now with confidence in Mary, Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, and her powerful intercession for our intentions, please kneel or sit for our Novena prayers. If you need a pamphlet, there are, they can be found on either side 
or in the back of the basilica. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same Spirit to be truly wise, and ever to rejoice in his consolation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Lord Jesus Christ, who have vouchsafed to glorify by numberless miracles the Blessed Virgin Mary, Immaculate from the first moment of her conception, grant that all who devoutly implore her protection on earth may eternally enjoy your presence in heaven, who with the Father and Holy Spirit live and reign, God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who for the accomplishment of your greatest works have chosen the weak things of the world, that no flesh may glory in your sight, and who for a better and more widely diffused belief in the immaculate conception of your mother, have wished that the miraculous medal be manifested to St. Catherine Labore. Grant, we beseech you, that filled with like humility, we may glorify this mystery by word and work. Amen. The Memorare. Remember, O most compassionate Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your assistance, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before you we kneel, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your clemency hear and answer them. Amen. The Novena Prayer. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus and our Mother, penetrated with the most lively confidence in your all-powerful and never-failing intercession, manifested so often through the miraculous medal, we, your loving and trustful children, implore you to obtain for us the graces and favors we ask during this Novena if they be beneficial to our immortal souls and the souls for whom we pray. You know, O Mary, how often our souls have been the sanctuaries of your Son, who hates iniquity, Obtain for us, then, a deep hatred of sin and that purity of heart which will attach us to God alone, so that our every thought, word, and deed may tend to his greater glory. Obtain for us also a spirit of prayer and self-denial, that we may recover by penance what we have lost by sin, and at length attain to that blessed abode where you are the queen of angels and of men. Amen an act of consecration to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. O Virgin Mother of God, Mary Immaculate, we dedicate and consecrate ourselves to you under the title of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. May this medal be for each one of us a sure sign of it and a constant reminder of our duties toward you. Ever while wearing it, may we be blessed by your loving protection and preserved in the grace of your Son. O most powerful Virgin, Mother of our Savior, keep us close to you every moment of our lives. Obtain for us, your children, the grace of a happy death, so that in union with you, we may enjoy the bliss of heaven forever. Amen.
join in singing number 427, Sing a New Church, number 427. Welcome to a very special group of pilgrims today. We have Pope John Paul II High School senior class here on retreat. They're going to graduate big time in June, but they came today to pray. They've been over all morning uh, working on their soul's journey, and they're uh, joining us for the Novena Mass today, as well as the regular pilgrims here week after week and the ones who join us virtually. So, uh, let's get started. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and so bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, from the chaste womb of the baptismal font, the church, our mother, has given to children of the earth a new birth as children of heaven. Grant that through the life-giving gospel and your grace-filled sacraments, the church may form its daughters and sons in the likeness of Christ, its founder, who was born of the Virgin Mother as the firstborn of many brothers and sisters and the savior of the whole human race, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles 
On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to those all far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. Peter testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. They devoted themselves to the teachings of the apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
listen to the words of your son, your son. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with that person. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can a person once grown old be born again? Surely he cannot re enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born flesh is flesh. And what is born spirit <coughs> is spirit. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I sit because I have a sore foot. But that's not really important today. What's really important is that we're together and we're the ones that are born of water and the Spirit. We're the children of God. We have the Holy Spirit poured out on us in confirmation and we've been brought to the table of the Lord. So everything that the readings are talking about are talking about what happened to us and we come here to sort of actualize that, put it to work. And this is, you know, Mass today is called the celebration of Holy Mary, the fountain of light and life. The fountain of life and light. And it's like a parallel to the church that just as Mary brought forth the child Jesus and all the mysteries of salvation came through her body, so too does it happen with the church that, you know, she's up there on the ceiling called the mother of the church, that everything comes through that same process of the Holy Spirit coming down upon us and giving birth to new sons and daughters of God. So you know all that. You've been through that before. But the really important thing is, how do you actualize that? And that's at the altar. Every time we come together, they, you know, the the sacrament of baptism, we renew it, but it's only done once. The sacrament of confirmation is uh, only done once, and it's a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, we're anointed just like Jesus. But what happens at the altar, they call it the repeatable sacrament of initiation. Into the mysteries of Christ, we are initiated again and again, and new and new. But one of the things that's really important is for us to be able to connect our life to that. That's what we're trying to pay attention to today. So, you know, everybody would say, well, of course, Jesus comes body and blood, soul and divinity, substantially present on the altar, right? Right. But our side is really the key to the unfolding of a depth of spirit in us and it has to do with our ability to intentionally join everything we have 
to Christ. So Jesus did it all, and we sort of do it drop by drop. And it's, we, we celebrate in a one-time perfect way the dying and rising of Jesus. That's what the Eucharist celebrates. A once and for all, what happened on Calvary flows out into eternity, and for all eternity is present in the church. But we're the other side that flows toward that. And that's really, really important for us, having that sense of how, to, how do you get in that flow? And it is by giving over to Christ whatever we're happy with and whatever we're sorry about and whatever we're grateful for and most especially what we're suffering. So, you know, to be able to die and rise again and again in our own life is a big suffering. There's the seniors here today. All their high school years are going to be behind them. They sort of die to the high school students, and hopefully they'll rise in new jobs and new schools and all that kind of stuff. And maybe further down the line, they'll rise as, you know, people in the workforce, and they will rise perhaps in families as husbands and wives, as spouses. There are all the ways in which we die and we rise. And then one of the things that has struck me recently, why young people struggle so much about marriage is they haven't learned to die. If there's ever a place to learn to die, it's being married to another person. You keep having to make room more and more for who this other person is. Another way that that happens is with our own children. You know, the, these high school students, their parents made all these sacrifices, paid all this tuition to get them a good education in a Catholic school. But all of that the parents have to let go of and let them go their own way to find their way in life and with God. That's anybody who's done that knows that's a dying and a really hard thing to do. My mom was always holding on to us. My dad was always saying, cut the cord, Dorothy. And, and, and she would say back, you have no idea of what it is to be a mother. No, that, and that's really true, how, how mothers are connected in a special way to their children means that there's a special kind of dying that happens in her life. The same for the priest, you know. The priest dies to having a family over and over again, you know. You die to not have a spouse, to, to not have somebody that's your very own every night, to not have children, to not have grandchildren. That's a lot of knots, right? And you only find your way through that gradually. It's sort of a built-in dying and rising that guarantees that somebody at that altar is actually experiencing the fire of that sacrifice. But that sacrifice is meant for all of us to join, and it actually makes the path easier. So what's incredible about it is whatever it is that you're struggling with, you can let Jesus have. Whatever this, like, you know, you know, like you can't figure out what to do with this or with this person, and it's like, you know what? I got a place for that. And that's the place. It's like right where Jesus is in your life is where you let go. I'm going to, Jesus, I might be skick, tick, kicking and screaming, and I might try and take it back, but I'm going to let you have this. I'm going to let you have maybe a person that I'm, you know, too possessive of. My children, you know, like, I, I'm going to let you have them. I, I can't figure out what to do with him. I can't figure out what to do with her. I can't figure out the next step. Let Jesus have that. That's the sacrifice. So what Jesus did once and for all is real and it becomes substantially present every time we're here like this for Mass. But your side of it and my side of it is to let go into it for the life of the world. And it makes it brand new. Number 202, Hail Holy Queen. Number 202.
Brothers and sisters, our gifts are prepared. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Holy Father, receive this offering which church, our virginal mother, makes in imitation of the mother of Christ, so that gathered into unity from every people and nation, the church may become one body, living by the one spirit through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God by the marvelous gift of your loving kindness. You decreed that the mysteries accomplished already in the Blessed Virgin should be accomplished in sign through the sacraments of the church. For from the baptismal font, the church brings to birth new sons and daughters conceived in fruitful virginity through faith and the Holy Spirit. These newborn children the church anoints with the precious oil of sacred chrism so that the spirit who filled the Blessed Virgin with an abundance of gifts may come down to bless them with an outpouring of grace. Each day, the church also prepares for its children the table where it nourishes them with the bread of heaven born of the Virgin Mary for the life of the world, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the angels of heaven offer their prayer of adoration as they rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices be one with theirs in their triumphant hymn of praise. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Catherine Labre, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It was Jesus who taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, Lord, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant us peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin <coughs> and safe from all distress as we await the joyful hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory of God. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of what they wish you to do in my room, but only say the word in my soul. Number 480, Shepherd Me, O God. Number 480. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Lord our God, fill with the Spirit of Christ those you have nourished with his body, so that our actions may always be guided by that same Spirit who shines upon the pathways of the Church and who sanctified the entire life of the Virgin Mother, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Number 180. Alleluia, alleluia, let the holy anthem rise. Number 180. <clears throat>